Hey everyone, I just wanted to do a quick video. I was asked about how exactly the legs go together. It is one of the more complex parts of the whole project. So very quickly, um, and before I get started, I've, I've mentioned before to use a dab of um, Loctite thread locker when putting that one screw into the servo um, gear here, because with that constantly moving in both directions, it's it's it always loosens up, and then your legs get really loose, and, and yeah, all things go to hell. So definitely put a little bit. However, I want to reiterate, put the tiniest, tiniest amount you can possibly on that tiny screw. I'm talking like just enough to wet the threads. It shouldn't even be a bubble of a drop at all. Because I have had a couple of servos now that were very difficult for me to get that screw out at disassembly time. And you're bound to have to disassemble it. So you just need the tiny, tiny, tiniest amount. It's just enough stick to keep it from unthreading itself. If you put too much and then tighten it just too much, I almost didn't get two of them out. And I thought I was going to have to destroy the servo to get it back, but... Anyhow, okay, moving on. So really quick, this is what it entails. So you have your two shoulder pieces, be it front or back. There is a difference, so keep them paired. And then you'll have three servo horns. I redid these parts. This is one of the changes I made to these parts, is they were set to use the plastic um, servo horns, which, yeah, wouldn't, wouldn't be the best idea. So I went for the aluminum ones, therefore I changed all the plastic to support that, first of all. That's why this is kind of a funky shape, because it was really made to take the crossbar plastic servo horn. But I didn't bother messing with that shape at all. I just plunged in my aluminum servo horn space there. Okay, so this is the shoulder block. And then you have two pieces to the mid-arm. There's the inner mid-arm, which is really the structure and what holds the servo and the servo horn for the knee. And this is a redesigned piece, as I've shown in previous videos, to beef this up here. And then this is the mid-arm cover. Again, there's a left and right to all of these parts, so be careful and aware of that. Um, these covers, I did put a little R on the right ones, and then on the wrists as well, I labeled them on the end. So you should be able to figure out from there. Okay, so there's those two parts here. Uh, the only thing I have planned for the future for plastics at this point is to beefen up this bearing support here. Uh, it, it goes in conjunction with this one, and I did mention this in a previous video, that that should be beefed up as well, like this one is. But since it's a bearing, it, it should survive for now. But it is a weak point. I have broken legs at that point. And then the fourth part to the legs is the wrist end. This too, I made some modifications, more or less to clean up this cavity here so that it didn't um, print is badly. It prints much better now. But I think this too could stand to have a little bit of beefing up around this area. And then I did already beef this up, but I think it could use a little bit more even still, because I have also broken one there as well. And that can, the strength of that can determine how you print this as well. I print these standing up flat on the bed like that. So then yes, this stub is a little bit weaker, but it makes it stronger here, so compromise. Okay, and then the last piece is the rubber foot. This also is a new design where I added these nubs to it to attach it to the foot. Those were not there before, and these just didn't stay on without that kind of thing. You had to glue them on, but now they go on pretty tightly and nicely. There you go. And this is an experimental one where I've kind of balled out the, the wheel, or the wheel, the foot a little bit more than it was before, too, to give me some more cushion, and it's printed a little more spongy. So you can experiment with that piece of it all, too. Okay, and then, so, aside from this hardware, along with the bearings, which I didn't mention, uh, and the motors, of course, and these are all listed on my GitHub. I have a parts list because I couldn't tell you the part number or size of that bearing offhand. Uh, I do not think I have any fasteners linked. I think I just say a whole lot of <laughs> three millimeter and four millimeter screws. Um, I would suggest buying yourself a couple of boxes like this. This is a mix of M6, oh sorry. Yeah, M6s to M3s. 
and then this is a mix of M2s to M4s. So between the two of these, yes, it cost me about 30 bucks, maybe a little bit more, but if you walk into Home Depot or Lowe's, you'll walk out with about 50 screws for that same $30. So trust me, ooh, sorry about that loud noise, it is worth the investment. Okay, that being said, let's see how quickly we can mock put this together. I'm not going to fully put it together, but I'll give you the idea how to do it. Okay, so the first things you have to start doing is installing your motor. So you start at the, at the wrist piece, and you'll put a motor in like this, and the wires will always point upwards towards the body, right? So that goes in there like that, screw that in place. Oh, I forgot to mention, this design also uses embedded nuts, which I'm not sure if I talked about in previous videos, and if you're not familiar with, what that is is just a little slot right there. You sit your nut on top of that and then heat up your soldering iron and press it down into place. I'm making it sound a lot easier than it is. Um, some people I've been talking to have opted to go with threaded inserts, which is a great idea. Which I'm assuming they're just using the holes that are there already, putting their insert on top and then same thing, solder ironing it straight down. So that's up to you all. I went with the embedded nuts and that's why I don't feel like rebuilding my back two legs right now because it is a pain in the butt. So anyway, that's the first thing you'll do is attach that motor to there. Okay, and then that piece is ready to go. Next thing is you will attach a motor to this piece, but you're only going to put two screws in at first. These two top screws here. And this, these may not fit so well because I haven't fully cleaned up these parts. You can see that's kind of crude there. I need to clean that up with a knife. But anyhow, just put those two screws in because when we put the cover on, the cover has to put go in this slot here before we put these screws in. Okay? Now the tricky part comes, is getting these two together along with the wires chased up through what I made even more of a difficult problem by putting this tubular chase here. There used to be just a hole there. Matter of fact, I think in the original there may have been nothing there and he just had the wires coming out this way. But I thought it was so much cleaner and prettier like that. Yes, this is fragile printing when you go to take out the support material in this thin wall. It can be tricky, but it comes out nice as you see. I think I've broken one in the, in the dozen legs that I've printed. Okay, I forgot to talk about two other things before we get into this. And I may have shown this in a previous video as well. When you're putting these in place, um, the holes sometimes can be a slightly off round because of the nature of 3D printing. If that's the case, you can drag a knife around it, the oval part of it, to try and clean it up a bit. And if that still doesn't fit, I would not force it in. You're much better off, again, getting your soldering iron out, heating that up, and it'll sink right into the, the slot that it's designed to. Okay, one goes into here, one goes into here, and then the third goes into here. Okay, and then the bearings, as I said, talking about how weak this piece is, the bearing just slips right into here. Normally it'll snap right in, your 3D printer may, see how that pressed right in there, excellent fit. Your 3D printer may leave a couple of little zits of plastic in there that you'll have to clean out first, but for the most part, yes, that fits pretty damn good. Okay, so since I have that in there now, this stub on the wrist here, obviously, is what goes in the bearing. Okay? Now this, yes, as I've said, is the tricky part. I'm not going to do this on camera, but you basically have to... Actually, let's take this off for now basically have to put your one wire in there like that and get this generally in place hold this with one hand and then take your wire from your wrist guy here do the same thing I said I wasn't gonna do this on camera and here I am because <laughs> it's kind of tricky to do all this and then you want to pull these pretty much as far as you can and you'll pull your slack out as you need it so once you have that you can get this yellow tab here slotted into the servo like I had talked about. Like so. Generally, you know, I'm not going to get it in there tight yet until you route your wires. So now from this side, see I just let it go. You have this trough here. 
Um, the original design left a little nub right here. I'm assuming he expected the wires to come out and up to help keep them from behind the servo. I normally cut that off because I kind of like them behind the servo. They don't get pinched, so I think they're good there. But anyway, I'm not going to go through the wiring routing issue right now because it is a little tricky and takes some finagling. This wire should be on top for starters, see? It does take some finagling to get that under there and in place correctly. So I'm just going to jump to this step. So let's pretend there was a servo horn there. First thing you'll do again is the way I did my calibration is legs perfectly straight when the servos are in home position. Then pop, pop that into the servo horn, the gear. Okay, and then tuck, put your screw in there so it doesn't move. And then your next step is to, with this in its latch, let me get these wires out of here. Because this is the most tricky part that I'm sure people will have problems with. I know I did. <coughs> um, so yeah, once this is in its little notch here. Okay. Then you want to pop this into its, the bearing. Well, after you had already popped this servo horn into the gear, like I talked about. Then, kind of in one move, you're going to pull down on this so that that stays seated in there. And we're aiming to push that pin into that bearing. But if we flip this over and look at it now from this side, we have this square little peg here that's going to fit into that hole right there. Now when you're cleaning up this part, make sure you clean up that hole nicely. If it's too fit, if it's too tight right now of a fit when you're putting this together, open it back up and, and clean up that hole a bit more. Okay, so you see, with a little, you have to pull down on it a bit towards the motor here, which will get it to just snap into that hole. And at that point, you want to make sure that your pin is aligned with the bearing and your servo horn should already be connected. Then you just give this a squeeze right on that joint that knee joint and then this screw hole right here is the most critical to keeping the whole leg together there's another embedded nut in there that I didn't show you and this screw is also one of the longer ones I think it's I'm not even gonna try and guess the size of it but it's one of the longer screws you'll need and once that's in there yeah your leg will be basically assembled I don't think I need to go through the rest but from here again keeping your leg straight I guess you can't see that in the video, but let's say this way. I will then position this straight because again, I homed all my servers to be servos to be at 90 degree angles. Just make sure you put this piece on correctly so the bearings face to the back of the robot and the servo horns face to the front. So when I take this. Here is a bearing, so this is the back side. So this pin here will go, and also down. You can see how this is lower <clears throat> than higher. It's not in the middle, the pin. Same with these, they're towards the bottom, not the top. So that will snap right into there. And then, I just want to make sure I didn't say that backwards, guys, because I did. My fault. This bearing hole and for that matter the servo horn holes are towards the top my fault not the bottom see that I would have assembled her backwards <laughs> so yes that will pop into your bearing hole there wrong side Chris on this side and then your leg attaches like that so if you can see that in the camera sorry and there you go that's how to assemble like so I just wanted to shoot this video quick while I'm waiting for something to print because I have another pretty important video coming up where I'm going to show off the full extensions and a few other body modifications I've made and yes those may be the final modifications I think you guys will be happy with them so stay tuned the video might not be up till late tonight and hopefully if you're not a late bird like me you'll catch it tomorrow thanks for watching guys